Hi, welcome to Edufulness channel. So now in this lecture, let us try to understand one of the very frequently used real-time scenario. So that is copying the files dynamically from one location to another location. So that means we are not going to uh, hard code the file names, but simply we are uh, all the files from one source to destination we are copying actually. So how you can achieve uh, by using data factory, let us try to understand. So let us try to understand in a simple manner what is the scenario here. So assume that in the source we have these are the files, file 1, file 2, file 3, file 4. And we want to move these files uh, from source to destination actually. So that's what copy these files from source to destination. So to achieve this one, we are using data factory. So let us try to understand how we are moving these files uh, from source to destination by using data fact. So it's very simple. You can see here. Uh, first of all, let us try to understand the steps. So we need to fetch the all the file names uh, into the data factory. Then after fetching each file, we need to copy from source to destination like this. So if you understand in these four steps, because four files are there, four times you need to copy. So each file you are copying means in each in each copying common action is what copying the file actually. Of course, file is different in each time, but action is same copying. So that means when action is same, so you are going to use the loop actually. So that is what the uh, you are going to do with the ADF actually. For this, we are going to use the get metadata activity for copying the for fetching the file names and this we are going to get in the form of array. So this array we are going to give input to this loop. So we are going to use the loop for each activity. Then for every value inside the array, it is going to work individually. So that may be that that may happen sequentially or parallelly basing on our configuration. So this is the steps we need to perform in the ADF. So let us try to understand same thing practically. So you can observe if you go to the source in the source files, we have a five files are there. So in this container, now these files, I would like to move from this container to this container. That's what destination files. So here there is no re records now at this moment. So after our execution of the ADF pipeline, those five files should come here. So let us come to ADF now go to the pipelines, take a new pipeline. So the very first step, as we discussed in the slide, you can see, first of all, you should get the file names. So for that, as we discussed, let us try to take get metadata activity. So by using this, you can fetch the file names. So that means I should have a data set, which is pointing to this particular source content. So let us try to create that quickly. So go to the settings, go to the new. So it is from the blob storage. Take the blob data store, continue. Assume it is a CSV files. All of them are CSV files. Then give the data set name DS underscore source files real time scenario. Then linked service, which we already created, which is pointing to that particular container actually. So now here file path is what? Okay, so here the file path is, so you it should connect to source files, right? Yes, it is connected to the source files. Don't select any file because you are just pointing to the source files so that it is fetching all the files inside this container. So click OK to create a data set. Yes, it is done. Then in this, which one you need? Metadata means it, it will fetch many things. But we need the file names. So in the drop down, select the child items. So this is pointing to data set is pointing to the source files container. Then by using this argument or by using this attribute, you can fetch all the file names. So now let us try to debug and then check whether it is fetching the file names or not. So let us try to refresh. Yes, it is done. You can see. Yes, you see here. These are the file names which is existed in the source container. 
and these things we are going to use further actually let us try to take what is the next step let us try to take a loop actually so that is the for each loop so go to the category iteration and conditional in that you can have for each activity so upon successful uh, completion of this activity you should go to the for each activity so connect from here to here on success you can see that so this day this activities output in that output child items array you need to pass to this for each activity actually because for each activity is going to accept array input so go to the settings what is the input you are giving see here this activities that means get metadata one dot so here output dot child items actually so child items array you are passing as a input to two this for each activity so now click ok then you can observe that again so this by referring this name you are passing only this one so that's what you can see only this part you are sending to for each activity okay now so it have every file name but internally if you observe every object it, it have two two fields one is name and one is type so we need name field actually so that you will get the file name now you passed this outputs child items that means file names in the form of array to for each activity go to the inside of the for each activity either click on here or you can click on in this pencil icon so anything is fine you will go to the inside of for each activity now what you want to do so we want to copy the data from source to destination so only one time you will do copy activity but you need to accordingly it will it should pick the file name so that's why take the copy activity drag and drop here then set the source data set so let us try to create a source data set which which should point to this source container not only that that so that this data set should be parameterized because file name is going to vary right so that's why every time into that parameter file name you are passing so let us try to create a new data set which is pointing to the blob stories then click continue then csv so data set source which is pointing to the source and parameters parameterized so parameter so let's give cell relevant name then blob storage is same so it should connect to source files container so select that parameter we will create so let click ok to create a data set now data set is created but it should be parameterized that means here it should ask the file name in the form of parameter that's why let us open this so data set is open create a parameter in the data set first of all so file name then come to the connections here you should pass that parameter so click on dynamic content select the file name and then click ok what is happening now in this pipeline in this pipeline here you can see now the configuration wise this field actually came so here by passing the file name that file name is going to replace in this position so in the source files path if you observe source files slash that particular file name is going to fetch that's what's the source configuration so that is why here you should pass the file name right so click on this dynamic content this part you observe so for each means item that means every individual item in the array like file one is one item file two is one item in that particular iteration on which value it is working that is going to consider now in that if you observe name and type two fields are there in each item so we need name field actually 
let me show you once again if you go back and in the output if you see see here this is one item this whole thing is one item in this item we need which particular field name field we need so that you are going to get the file name so that is why in this again you have because you have two fields which field value you need that field name you should mention that's what you configured here you can see that item is the whole item then in that name field we need so here file name is going to replace that file name is coming to here so that source files slash file name then that file is going to select as a source now you need to set the sync right to where you want to copy so go to the sync section let us try to create a new data set which is pointing to blob and in the blob csv type then which particular container so that is let us try to take the file path so this is pointing to the destination files so it should point to only destination files container click ok give the data set name ds underscore destination uh, rs okay so that's it click ok so now data set is ready now let us try to validate it no errors close it then debug it to see the files in this destination files container right now we don't have any files so now observe the output section of this refresh yes you can see get this fetch the details from blob source blob source container and for each activity because you have five files or five times you have a copy data one activity and all files are succeeded to copy to the destination now let us observe so this is the destination right container let us refresh to observe those five files so this is the way we are going to copy the files dynamically you can fetch the all file names dynamically from source location and you can move them to destination by using for each activity in general you can do with the copy activity but how many files are there that many times individual copy activities you need to use here if i have 30 files 30 copy activities i need to take here 30 times data source and destination you need to set so that is the very tedious task and we don't know how many files are there in the source location so this is purely dynamic so how many files are there that many times it is going to iterate actually so this is what uh, of course and here one more thing all the files are sequentially uh, parallelly loaded from source to destination so that is what one advantage instead of going sequentially one after the other so this is what actually copying the files dynamically from one location to another location so this is very regular scenario in real time so try to practice well so thank you very much for watching please like subscribe and share the video